So our next speaker is Mr. Simon Chan. And Mr. Simon is an executive committee member in the Hong Kong Toys Council and managing director of Accor International Company Limited. In the early 80s, Mr. Chan managed one of the best selling toys, the US Stoppers, and the first McDonald's premium program, shipping 35 million pieces of free willing uh, mini stoppers to the US. So uh, let's invite Mr. Simon, please. Principal, dear professors, doctors, teachers, students, guests, everybody, good morning. And um, I'm not a professor, I'm not a teacher, and uh, so please excuse me for my uh, poor presentation. And I would just like to give you like some of my knowledge, knowledge, experiences, and uh, my personal opinions. Personal, nothing relates to uh, the <laughs> Hong Kong USD. And so let's start with like uh, toy design. The word toy design actually, it's simple, easy to understand. Toys are something made for chil children to play. And design is to make something look better. If you try to explain this word in a simple way. But... Um, in some cases, I think you have also heard of uh, a, uh, a term called inventor. Inventors normally are those who come up with ideas so unique that could be patented, not only in toys, but also in other products. And actually, there were quite a number of patented toys in the 80s and the 90s but unfortunately, it's getting less and less now. And uh, I'm not uh, that old to talk about the 50s and the 60s. <laughs> like, <laughs> so in real life, I would say it's very difficult for kids to pick a good toy because anything in a kid's hands can be regarded as a toy. So in my dictionary, I would try to group four criteria and to, to classify that is a toy. Number one, safe to play. And number two, educational. Number three, enlightening. And number four, attractive. So attractive, you can say attractive, actually it's design. And I put it in the last. And safe to play, number one. Because now toys, safety is number one. And this, currently the toys manufactured, I would say 100% or 100 times safer than those made 30, 40 years ago. Being a toy designer, not only we have to make the toy attractive, educational, enlightening, but we have to put safety in the first place. If you want to learn a little bit more about safety, I would suggest you to go to the Oops, sorry. Last, uh, previous. Go to this um, website, the uh, CPSC in the U.S., Consumer Product Safety Commission. You can go take a look and check about the safety requirement. With regard to the other three criteria, I can give you a little bit more example. In the late 70s and the 80s, and which was when I started getting involved in the toys field. That's the most prosperous times, which when I can see a lot of new toys launching. And I give you some examples as well. Rubik's Cube, Cabbage Patch Kids, Strawberry Shortcakes, and Stompers. And Rubik's Cube was invented by a Hungarian sculptor and professor of architecture, Erno Rubik. 
this is the toy actually I like the most. And uh, in terms of design, and I admire this design the most. The other one, uh, now you can take a look to the picture. Maybe for some, some people who, who haven't seen the Rubik's Cube, this is what the Rubik's Cube is like. And the other one I want to say is Cabbage Patch Kids. And uh, this is a line of dolls created by an uh, American art student, Xavier Roberts, in 1978. And uh, I think the uniqueness of this doll is each, each one comes with a birth certificate. Each doll differs from one another. The differences between each doll are like the head, facial expressions, hairstyles, hair materials, clothes, socks, shoes. So the designer tried to make each and every doll different and uh, in order to issue a birth certificate and give a name, just like uh, you have your own pet or you have your own kid. And uh, to pack with different accessories as well. And the designer is Xavier Roberts. And then the other one is the strawberry shortcake. This one was a licensed character owned by American Greetings, originally used in green greeting cards and expanded to include dolls, posters, and other products. And uh, the last one is Stomper. And I put it the last, but this actually this Stomper project was managed by me since it was, it was born. And uh, the company who marketed this product is Sharper or was Sharper Toys, no, no more Sharper Toys. And the designer actually is uh, Eddie Goldfarb. He ran a uh, design firm. But the design was so unique, he got a lot of pattern. And I can show you a little bit of the, uh, the design. You can see like the motor in the middle. He used a rectangular motor, and you can see normally all the motors with one shaft sticking out to one side. But this one, the shaft is sticking out to both sides with pinion gear, worm gear, and then a spur gear. And the spur gear, you can see the, the round gear, I call the spur gear, is attached to the shaft. So when the motor runs, it actually drives both the front and rear axle. And so it's called the four-wheel drive. And you can also see like the chassis, uh, or maybe I can use the, the pointer. Turn it on. Oops, sorry, oh, you have to press it? Okay, I'm sorry. Now this is the battery compartment for accommodating an AA size battery. So you can see, actually the whole chassis is not that big. It's almost just like the, the length of the AA battery. So it's a small car with exaggerated size wheels and tires, and the tires were interchangeable. And when this product was launched, the the TV commercial showed a person holding a car, a small stomper, very small, just like this big. Put it in his hand and stick it out and it climbed all the way up to his upper arm. And that got caught a lot of attention. And uh, so during, like between the um, 80, 1980 to 1987, about seven years, we sold about, I would say, I don't know how to, <laughs> how to <laughs> put the number, at least more than several hundred million pieces in total. And they came up with not only that little car, but also with a lot of other play sets. Sorry for the low resolution. <laughs> 